Textbook of Rockwood and Green's Fractures in Adults Section 1 General Principles Bone and Cartilage Healing Components of Fracture Healing Cells and tissues in fracture healing consist of progenitor cells or periosteum and endosteum, chondrocyte, osteoblast, osteoclast, inflammatory cells, mesenchymal cells, and muscle. Periosteum and endosteum. Distinct fibrous layers rich in cells and blood vessels play a role in synthetic functions such as proliferation and fracture. Chondrocyte. Produce extracellular matrix or ECM, participate in endochondral ossification by matrix synthesis and calcium deposition. Osteoblast Produce osteoid or organic component of bone consisting type 1 collagen. Osteoclast Derived from macrophage and monocyte lineage responsible for resorption of bone. Inflammatory cells including platelets neurophiles or PMN, megrophage, and leukocytes, mesenchymal stem cells, fibroblast-like cells which play a role in differentiation of cells. Scaffold Scaffold or extracellular matrix is responsible for converting structure properties of bone and cartilage, also serves in regulatory functions. ECM consists of 60-70% to inorganic material, which is crystals containing calcium, phosphates, and ions. Organic portion, which accounts 30 to 40 percent, consists of type 1 collagen and non-collagenous protein such as osteocalcin, bone cellular protein, proteoglycans, and matricellular proteins. Blood supply in hypoxic environment, hypoxia inducible factor or HIF1 promotes VJF production, which further promotes revascularization and bone repair. Molecules There are several molecules that require a detailed explanation of the mechanism of action given their use in a clinical applications or their future potential as targets to improve fracture healing and treat non-union fracture. Types of bone healing Endochondral Replacement of cartilaginous enlarge with bone occurs as resident chondrocytes mature and senescence with vessel infection. In unstable fractures, chondrocytes hypertrophy and replaced by osteoblast through vessel infections in cartilage callus presents in fracture related with cast and completely stability. Types of bone healing Intramembranous primary healing process of bone formation without cartilaginous intermediate involves direct deposition of osteoid by cells of mesenchymal origins in rigid internal fixation healing without formation of visible fracture callus stages of endochondral fracture repair hematoma formation accumulation of fracture hematoma composed of debris platelets erythrocytes and extravasated immune cells Fracture hematoma is bioactive. Higher amount of TNF alpha, IL6, and IL8 in fracture hematoma, which promotes local inflammatory response. Inflammation Phagocytosis of necrotic tissues and cytokines production. Neutrophil arrives at 3 hours after fracture. Furthermore, local inflammatory response is initiated in fracture site. Surgical intervention in this early phase of fracture healing may disrupt hematoma and inflammatory stages in rat models are associated with high risk of delayed union and malunion. Soft callus Differentiation of progenitor cells into chondrocytes on osteoblast, predominant tissue in callus, cartilage, or osteoid, begins by 3 weeks in human. Hard callus Conversion of cartilage into calcified cartilage matrix with terminal differentiation of chondrocytes, blood vessels invade callus with dominant cells are osteoblast and osteoclast, occurs several weeks after fracture. Remodeling Return of previously damaged tissue to pre-injured state, canalicular architecture is re-established, haversian system with its osteocytes is restored. 
continues for months or years after solid osseous union has been achieved. Remodeling occurs as a result of coordination between osteoblast and osteoclast. Wolf's Law, strengthening of the internal and cortical architecture of bones in response to applied loads. Stress-induced remodeling of bone. This feature shows the primary bone healing utilizes an osteoclastic cutting cone crossing the fracture cape, followed by bone reconstitution by the trailing osteoblast. In order to accomplish the stress-induced remodeling of the bone, the action of osteoclast and osteoblast are coupled in the functional unit of bone remodeling, the cutting one. Stages of Fracture Repair The overlapping stages of fracture repair. Fracture healing cannot be separated into discrete phases of cellular activity, but should rather be looked at as a continuum. Although at any one time one phase may dominate, Basic science research suggests that all processes are occurring simultaneously early in the fracture healing. Remodeling continues for up to 6 years after the initial injury depending on the treatment modality. Mechanical influences on bone healing Mechanical instability results in endochondral ossification, while mechanical stability results in intramembranous ossification. Earlier stabilization may result in bone formation without callus. Failures of healing There are two types of failures of healing. First, atrophic non-union. Major factors include infection, compromised nutrition, smoking, medications, and fracture vascularity. Second one is hypertrophic non-union due to lack of adequate stability at the fracture site. Systemic pharmacologic treatments influencing bone healing. The first one, bifosphonate, decreased risk of fracture in patients with low bone mineral density. The second one, parathyroid hormone or PTH, regulator of circulating calcium, phosphate, and vitamin D. Cartilage healing. Cartilage healing. Isolated chondral injury healing response may be defective due to lack of blood supply. Adjacent viable chondrocytes may proliferate and form clusters of new cells. However, chondrocytes cannot readily migrate to site of injury. There may not be sufficient defect filling. Osteochondral injury may trigger healing process from bone tissue. Normal articular cartilage is never created. Cells lose the appearance of chondrocytes and appear more fibroplastic. Cartilage healing. This figure shows that the cells lose the appearance of chondrocytes and appear to become more fibroblastic, and the fibrous matrix, fibrolites, and fragments. Factors influencing cartilage healing consist of gap, step off, loading and motion, and patient age. Consequences of cartilage injury Small lesions or lesions outside main weight-bearing areas may not produce clinically significant impairment. However, they may progress over time. Cartilage injuries are risk factors for osteoarthritis. Thank you.